All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this af uh, good afternoon. Today is Thursday, December 3rd, 2015. This is a public hearing before the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. I'm Chairman Steve Crosby. And President, present also are Commissioners McDonald, Commissioner Stebbins, and Commissioner Zuniga. Commissioner Camera, Cameron had to leave. We're here today to accept public comment on the proposed design changes to the MGM Springfield Casino project. Before we begin, the Commission would like to thank you all for being here today. This is a public hearing, and it's critically important that all of you, the public, be a part of the process to ensure that the Commission achieves the best results possible. The purpose of this public hearing is to offer any interested person or group an opportunity to comment on the proposed design changes. This is not a question and answer period or a debate. Once we begin, anyone who wishes to comment may raise their hand, or actually they should go ahead and sign up in back. There's a sign up sheet in back if you haven't already signed up on the sign up sheet. And then we will recognize you to come before us and we will hear from all the folks who sign in. In order to use the available time efficiently, the Commission asks that speakers limit their comments to three minutes. There will be a clock that Amy is using here uh, to the right of the speaker's podium, and that will be set at three, three minutes for each speaker. We hope you will be respectful of that time and respectful of everybody else's time and adhere to the three-minute rule. The Commission requests that all speakers identify themselves prior to commenting, and please be sure to keep your voices up as this hearing is being recorded both, both audio and video. It's not being streamed, streamed live on the web but it will be archived on our website in video, and there will be a transcript prepared. With that, we will now open up the floor for comment. We have, I believe, two city councilors here, including uh, Councilor Fenton, the Springfield City Council President, um, and he is invited to be our first speaker, as we routinely respect elected officials especially ones who have dentist appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, uh, members of the commission, uh, Mr. Chairman, for hearing me first. I do have a dentist appointment. Uh, I'm joined uh, today by my colleagues on the city council, uh, Councillor Tim Rook, uh, Councillor from Ward 7, Tim Allen, and Council Vice President from Ward 8, Orlando Ramos. Uh, first, let me start by thanking the commission for hosting this uh, hearing and, and public comment section of your meeting here in the city of Springfield. Uh, the council and uh, the, the residents and uh, surrounding communities of the city of Springfield obviously have an interest in these design changes and are very grateful uh, for your trip out here and, and your willingness to hear from us and, and make yourselves available for public comment. I should uh, note that it was uh, uh, President Fenton who wrote us and asked us specifically if we would be willing to have this hearing and we agreed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the last time that I addressed this body at a public hearing uh, was over a year ago. Uh, in West Springfield at West Springfield Junior High School. Uh, I spoke in favor of the project. I spoke to the credibility and integrity of MGM Springfield and the design and the plan that they had brought forward uh, to the voters of Springfield, our fine mayor, and uh, the city council and subsequently to the MGC. Uh, I still support MGM and their overall vision and mission uh, for the city of Springfield. I think that this is a once-in-a-lifetime economic development opportunity uh, for our region and, and really for Western New England. Uh, however, I also stand before you today opposed to their design changes. Uh, the city of Springfield, our taxpayers and our mayor, uh, have endeavored and spent a great amount of resources on negotiating our host community agreement. In that agreement, it calls for certain designs. Uh, those designs always included a 25-story glass high-rise tower. Many referred to it uh, as the marquee aspect of the project or, uh, quote, the wow factor. And the surprise announcement to myself and many others in leadership in our community that this component to the project would be eliminated uh, was met with resistance. Uh, I can speak for myself in this respect in that uh, I have great concerns about the elimination of this aspect of the project. Well, I recognize that uh, circumstances change, and I appreciate MGM's longstanding commitment to the city in light of subsequent referendums and uh, presentations required uh, before historical uh, MGC boards and, and other agencies. The fact of the matter remains that we have a legally binding contract with this entity, and in that contract, it calls for a high-rise tower and other amenities that are promised. And 
I stand before you today not unwilling to compromise. I, I stand before you today, as I have indicated to MGM Springfield uh, in recent discussions, that the city of Springfield and myself and the city council want to be reasonable parties. Uh, we are not immune to changes in the marketplace, nor are we ignorant to them. We recognize that accommodations ought to be made. But I, I have reservations and strong concerns about allowing what was a bilateral contract to be uh, subsequently negotiated in a unilateral way. And so, insofar as the HCA agreement had really four parties to it, uh, MGM Springfield, the mayor, the Springfield City Council, and the voters of the city of Springfield, uh, those same four parties ought to be uh, incorporated and consulted as changes come, uh, come forward. And, and these type of, of, of very substantial and uh, material changes to the project warrant that type of discussion, not unilateral presentation. So I want to thank MGM for their recent cooperation and discussion, but the fact is that this change was announced to me and many <coughs> others as a surprise. And if the project, from my perspective, is to effectively move forward in a way that's in the best interest of the city of Springfield and the surrounding communities, we need to do so uh, through a fair and deliberative negotiation process. Uh, if the tower is to be eliminated, and as I heard uh, MGM present earlier, facts that indicate uh, 50 to $75 million worth of savings, uh, the city and the Commonwealth ought to be compensated for allowing that type of a change. Uh, you know, as I said, this is a contract. There needs to be consideration to entice us to do that. So to that end, uh, MGM has been uh, open to uh, contemplating alternatives with me that would go above and beyond what was originally in the HCA. Uh, some examples include expanding potentially their uh, residential market rate apartment footprint. Uh, they've currently committed to 54 units. I'm asking them to look at expanding that. Uh, in terms of the number of units that would be a part of the HCA uh, through the amendments. Uh, I've, I've offered up a compromising position saying that perhaps there could be a component that would include in those market rate units uh, condo ownership as opposed to market rate apartments to help offset some of the risks for the company. Uh, and they also have, uh, to their credit, been proactive about looking at how they can redesign the skyline in light of the elimination, uh, proposed elimination, I, su I should say, of the tower. Uh, so I, I wanted that testimony to be on the record before the commission. I, I, do, not I do not support uh, the plan as proposed. I think there is a world in which uh, the city of Springfield could benefit from a design that did not include a tower, but I think that that necessitates a thoughtful deliberation uh, and negotiation, uh, not a unilateral discussion based on MGM telling us uh, that they needed to remove the tower and here's why. Uh, so I, I wanted that on the record. I also wanted to uh, impress upon the commission uh, two more final points, and I appreciate uh, you allowing me some extended time here. Uh, the first is uh, a, Attorney Stratton correctly pointed out earlier that it is the council's intention to uh, take up a vote on the overlay district uh, later this month in December. Uh, that is because we want to cooperate with the company. They have an interest in uh, continuing to build their infrastructure in the downtown and tear down buildings. Uh, and to that end, uh, we have agreed to schedule on an expedited basis an overlay hearing to allow them to do that groundwork with the understanding that they're proceeding uh, at their own risk with that uh, development um, and, and they will not be binding themselves with infrastructure uh, out, outbuilds that impact the future design. Uh, and secondly, I want to articulate to the commission, in addition to my concern about the tower, uh, and, and the, re the reduction in the capital expenditure of somewhere between 50 and 75 million. I'm also very concerned about the lack of uh, specificity with respect to the location, ownership model, and amenities provided uh, for the 54 guaranteed offsite market rate units. Uh, we know not yet where they will uh, be located. And I recognize that there are uh, business reasons for why it is uh, not feasible at this time for MGM to have an alternative site located. Uh, but from my perspective, that is a, a problem that MGM has created for themselves. By moving their 54 units from Main Street and Howard to some to-be-determined location, uh, they have put the city council and the city in a real bind in terms of how we amend our HCA agreement. 
any, any amendments that we make to our exhibits that discuss specifically where these units will go are going to have to subsequently be amended when MGM tells us uh, where they propose to put the market rate units. And uh, of additional concern is, is the ownership uh, mechanism through which they will take title and subsequently manage these properties. Uh, there have been discussions about uh, collaborative and uh, co-ownership models, if you will, uh, between MGM and other entities for these future units. Obviously, the city has concerns about those types of arrangements. Uh, there are worlds in which they may work, but again, I think the city needs to be incentivized uh, to get to that position. So uh, I thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the commission, uh, for holding this hearing here in Springfield. Uh, I want to stress in, in, in conclusion that myself and, and I know many of the residents of the city of Springfield and my colleagues uh, appreciate MGM's invis investment and commitment, and, and we remain committed to them to finding a good project that we can all be proud of. We were all proud of the project that we were promised uh, over two years, getting on three years ago, uh, with our HCA and, and the referendum that was held. Uh, but I'm hopeful that through a more deliberative process, we can secure uh, a more favorable agreement to the city of Springfield uh, than the one that's currently proposed. Thank you, President Fenton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do cut city council president slack, but I hope the rest of us, the rest of you, will please uh, adhere to our three-minute rule. Yep, um, city councilor Ramos. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Good afternoon. I first like to uh, thank you for accepting the city council's request to hold this meeting here in the city of Springfield. Excuse me, and Councilor, just um, all the speakers, please identify yourself for our recorder. Sure, Orlando Ramos, Vice President of the Springfield City Council. Thank you for holding this meeting in the city of Springfield and giving our residents an opportunity to speak um, their voice on this very important and historic project in the city of Springfield and in our, in our region. Um, I'll be brief. I, I know that there will be some people that, that will talk about the process in which MGM proposed these changes and uh, there will be some arguments made as to the aesthetics of the project. Um, what I want to do is I want to make an argument from the economic development uh, point of view. Being the chairman of the economic development subcommittee on the city council, I'm here to address the economic development component. When I initially heard about the changes uh, that were being proposed for this project, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed. I was disappointed because of uh, the way that these changes were proposed to us, uh, the lack of communication. Uh, and I was disappointed because of the elimination of what I believe um, was the wow factor that was a prerequisite for um, application for, for approval um, from the commission. But I was also disappointed because I think that if it is built the way that it's being proposed now, we'll be missing an opportunity, a major economic development opportunity, because there is a correlation between cities that build up and science of a local economy. And if you look at the history of our country, you look at the beginning of when the cities began to construct high-rise buildings, you'll see that the construction of high-rise buildings is a sign of a healthy, healthy economy, an invitation for new businesses, a symbol of community on the rise, and a way to attract new residents. Columnist and researcher David Holmes put together a very detailed research project on high-rise construction in the last decade. And in this study, he determined that there were four major factors and four major reasons why communities and cities continue to build up after the turn of the century. And some of these are very uh, common sense. Uh, but there's one that I think that really applies to the city of Springfield and that will apply to the city of Springfield once this economic development project is completed. Uh, and it states that business centers, <coughs> driven by their status as significant regional business centers, as well as cities with high quality downtown and near downtown urban environments. And I believe that's where the city of Springfield will end up once this project is completed. This is not new information. The fascination with high rise buildings is something that goes back centuries. And I, I cited uh, a book from 1959 in the council meeting when this was first proposed. And this book was um, written by Earl Shorts and Walter Simmons called Offices in the Sky. 
And in the book, the authors state that the character and quality of in any city can be told from a great distance by its skyline. But these buildings do more than just advertise a city. They show the faith of many in its destiny, and they create a like faith in others. They are evidence of the community's spirit, spirit of life, the hallmark of progress, the portent of sustained de development and growth. They are a standing notice of the world that a particular, um, to the world that a particular city has arrived amongst its elect and it possesses those indispensable qualifications, location and transportation for community uh, continued growth. So it's not just aesthetics, there is an economic development component to it. Look, you need, you need 12 stories to qualify for the National Registry of High Rise Buildings. And according to studies, you need 18 stories to make any significant impact on the city skyline. MGM's current proposal calls for no more than six stories. And to me, uh, that means that we're missing out on a major economic development opportunity. So I, I've, I've said this privately to MGM, and I've said it publicly before, and I'll say it again. I don't support the, the current proposal, um, and I'm not willing to support it until we address, and MGM addresses how they will change the skyline of the city of Springfield. It doesn't necessarily have to be a 25-story glass tower, um, but I do believe that there are things that we can do to change the skyline, and um, you know, I'm hopeful that we can get your support on that. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Counselor. Thank you. Counselor Rook. Amy, could you turn that so I can see it too? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Tim Rook. I live at 63 Woodcrest Drive in Springfield, Massachusetts. I'm one of the longest serving members on the Springfield City Council, and I'm here to state that I'm in full favor of the amended plan as presented by MGM. I think what happens sometimes uh, as we go through a difficult process that this has been, and you've all experienced it, uh, it's an enormous project. And in any project that we've had in the city of Springfield, including the school buildings that we've built, there has always been changes and amendments made and agreed to. If you talk about the wow factor that so many people are hung up on, um, the wow factor to me is that there's over two million square foot, fo square footage that's gonna be developed in the city of Springfield that hasn't seen this size of a project and uh, it's the largest project in the city of Springfield's history. There are going to be changes. And I think everybody has to check their ego at the door and realize that the people that are proposing this, this is their livelihood. I would much rather see the walkability of Main Street like it used to be back in the 50s and the 60s than to have a tower. I would take pedestrian traffic over a pedestal any day. We had a, we had a tower in Springfield. It was called Bay State West. When it was built, that was what everybody thought was gonna be great. Uh, a lot of the businesses along Main Street dried up because they moved into the Tower Square. Then the Holyoke Mall was built, and guess what? All of the business w went to Holyoke. What they're proposing is what works in every other city, to have walkability on Main Street. That's what's going to be the wow factor. Right, around, right now at 4.30, you could throw a bowling ball down Main Street, you're not gonna hit anybody where they're anticipating eight million visitors a year. That's going to be a boost for every small business downtown. Since they made the change of the hotel and laid it down on Maine and, uh, Maine and State, down to Howard, each of the properties on the opposite side of the street have been acquired. They've been vacant for years. There's been no activity, there's been very little interest in the city of Springfield. This is a good project for the city of Springfield. It will put people to work. It will bring back viability to downtown. I think that's what we have to look at. Now since MGM has talked about it, what's revisited again is the baseball stadium. And some of the members on your board were big supporters of baseball, including myself. That now has been re uh, resurrected. You're going to have MGM on one side, you'll have hopefully baseball on the other, and we can visit a third issue that was brought up over 20 years ago. That was an aquarium along the riverfront. And if you start to, uh, MGM alone isn't gonna save the city of Springfield, but there are a lot of other elements. This is a catalyst for change, and I think that's what Springfield has been stale with for so many years. People living in the past and want to, wanting to talk about what could have been, what should have been, what may have been. Well, the, the time is now, and these gentlemen are willing to spend $900 million of private monies 
which we have never seen in the city of Springfield before. So I support the project. I have found MGM to be extremely cooperative throughout the entire process. Their availability and their candor has been tremendous. I've met with many of them and have many questions uh, answered. Um, I would urge you to please uh, approve the plan as amended and give Springfield an opportunity to get back up on its feet. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll go to the list in the order of sign up. Uh, Karen Ford. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Karen Ford. I'm a longtime resident of the city of Springfield, taxpaying citizen. Stand as an opponent to MGM and any other casino coming to our area. When I look at the MGM presentation, it is not impressive at all to me. It is a monster and it is a demon that will destroy our city. I attended the meeting on the 18th that was held at City Stage and when MGM broke down the entities that would be reduced from 10 bus berths to three, that's a strong indicator that they don't expect the same patronage. Uh, they also spoke about the um, movie theater and the bowling alley and, and various entities of this project being reduced. However, we look today and we see we're, we're being more concerned about saving MGM than we are about saving Springfield. That's a sad day in the land. When we look at the health impact study, I attended a forum um, maybe just over a month or so ago, and they spoke at that forum and stated, this is done through um, UMass uh, via Bay State, that any time a casino comes into a social, economically deprived community, it destroys. We continue to hear about uh, Detroit filing bankruptcy, let me add. That's not a plus. That does not add to an, as an, a positive attribute for wanting something of this nature to come to our deprived city already. It's amazing to me that we have absolutely no safeguards. None of our leadership it was good to hear uh, President Fenton say today that he is opposed to any design changes, however flexible. I'm opposed to the unit coming here, period. No one is saying that this is what we need not to bring here because it's not a pro for our city. There, are, there are other things that can be done, but this, uh, when when we were talking, when they were talking with the um, health impact study that. People who live in these communities, and it will not only affect Springfield, but it will because gambling has no boundaries. The addiction has no boundaries. It will flow out into all of the neighboring communities, and if anyone chooses to travel a great distance, we may find them on the road dead too. So I would also like to add, um, it's amazing to me that we no longer hear anything about blue tarp, which MGM, Mike Mathis made it very clear, sink or swim, MGM is out of here in two years. So it's, they don't even put great stock in their project. And now, who's the head of what's called blue tarp? Mike Mathis. How amazing. <clears throat> I hope that you all will take your positions serious and think about the fact that this is a socially, socially, economically deprived community that does not need the ills of a casino by any means. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Rhonda Latney. Good afternoon, Mass Gaming Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Rhonda Latney, a lifelong resident of Springfield and an anti-casino advocate. I find it ridiculous Mayor Sano was dumbfounded over the reduction of the proposed casinos and how the residents of Springfield, our elected officials, and Mass Gaming Commissioners are finding out about the reductions <coughs> over a three-month period and not all at once. I'm under the impression that all correspondence should have been in writing and channeled to the necessary departments 
It is evident that Mirsano, City Solicitor Ed Paikula, and our elected officials are not attentive to the information they are responsible for and have access to. In an article from Business West, dated March 11, 2014, entitled Regions, <coughs> Trades, People, and Anticipate Casino Construction Opportunities, state the following. For instance, Landscape architectural opportunities might be limited in an urban casino, says Stephen Roberts, president of Stevens A. Roberts Landscape Architecture and Construction in Springfield. There might be some exterior constructions in regard to pavers and maybe water features, but I don't see there being a lot of green space available to create park, um, pocket parks, he said. From the plans I've seen, there's not a whole lot of landscaping. It's mostly a kind of urban cityscape, end of article. After I viewed the current design proposal, I noticed the adjoining building to the South End Community Center has been eliminated and replaced with a pocket park. Therefore, this changes the urban design and leads to drastic material costs and reduction in material changes. Another change is a pedestrian bridge across, the state, across State Street and Main Street that has been eliminated also. For MGM or city councils to deem the site plan complete at this time seems incomprehensible, considering there has been no mention of the location of the market rate apartments and its detailed construction plans, or justification of the removal of the adjoining building to the South End Community Center and the removal of the pedestrian bridge. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Mark Chekwitz. Mark Chekwitz, resident of Springfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and Councilman. And thank you to my fellow residents of Springfield. I, I really appreciate the, the passion with which the, the previous two speakers spoke. They love our city and they look out for the best. It is difficult to, to face a decision about design changes coming from an entity who, who really put their best effort forward in their first proposal. They did, however, face something very unexpected, and this cannot be eliminated from the discussion. They were given a set of rules from which to play from. We had a democratic process which allowed for three casinos in the state. They came here using the, the forum or the platform of that democratic process with an investment in time, in money, and with manpower. They put their best effort forward among many other companies who also did the same. And they came out victorious. And I might add all the other companies who, who endeavored to come into the western Massachusetts area all failed to get their referendums passed in their communities, host communities. Upon that moment, they were faced with a referendum on an issue that had already been decided democratically. I do believe that they were, they were blindsided by this. I certainly was because it seems to me that if somebody decided to have a referendum on barbershops, we could have that and eliminate all barbershops immediately across Massachusetts if you could get enough people to stop haircuts, which maybe I might vote for. But truthfully, truthfully, it, is, it was an unfair process. Even though it is democratic, the, democ the opportunity for, for people in the democratic process was prior to the investment made by this company. I appreciate, I have always appreciated Mr. Mathis's willingness to meet with me when I have had problems and issues. I spoke out of order at a previous meeting when there was no public discussion, you may, you may remember. And he immediately came out and was willing to meet with me after that. And he did, and we spoke. I do have no concern about the design changes because most importantly, they are making a commitment to the city of Springfield in dollars. And they have to make decisions that amount to success. The city has to have them be successful. There is 
One last thing I want to say, I know I'm running out of time very quickly. There is a $2.4 billion dollar glass tower sitting at the end of the boardwalk in Atlantic City, the former Revel Casino. It is two years old. It is now bankrupt and empty. Despite being the most beautiful building on that boardwalk, it is empty and has been purchased for $85 million. Okay, we cannot afford to have an empty tower sitting in Springfield two years from now. They must be, or two years hence from their opening. They must be successful. And we, as community citizens, have to hold them to their promises, but more importantly, we are the holders of the keys to the success of our children in the future <coughs> endeavors in this city. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Carol Kerr. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Carol Kerr, and I'm a resident of Forest Park Heights. Thank you for allowing me to speak here today. I completely disagree that a new skyscraper is either essential or even a particularly desirable thing. The new hotel is an excellent layout because the hotel complex is much more in keeping with the feel of the downtown area. It integrates, not dominates. It doesn't steal the thunder of the existing skyscrapers. They still hold pride of place. MGM doesn't dominate the skyline of our downtown, nor should it. I like that. It doesn't become MGM city. We still get to keep our unique personality. Guests are less isolated in a lower hotel than a big tower. People are more likely to walk an attractive surrounding area. People watch at an outdoor cafe, shop, walk to shows and such, rather than hole up in the glass tower. Regarding the apartments, I love the idea of the off-site building being used as apartments. Great buildings, great location, near to downtown, near to the museums, library, entertainments, Mattoon Street, art venues, and the casino, but not part of it. The people who live there will feel a part of our community, not part of an entertainment complex. Did MGM miss an opportunity by not communicating effectively? Absolutely. Shame on them. Every project has changes that need to be made along the way. There's nothing nefarious about it. It's just how large-scale building projects work. Sometimes change necessitated by legal issues, environmental or financial issues, space constraints, material or structural problems, efficiencies, and any manner of unforeseen issues. For the most part, the general public sees only the finished product. This is not MGM's first rodeo. They're spending a lot of money and will ensure that they will build an entertainment complex that is the best it can be. That would be true wherever they build. It isn't in their best interest to build something less than spectacular. They want to draw as many people for as long as possible. I think it's counterproductive to micromanage something they do very well all over the world already. Hold them to their contracts, financial obligations, hiring goals, and community commitments. But don't examine everything that changes every time under a microscope. These guys are experts. Let them build a world-class complex. The people of Springfield should be concerned and want the council members to make sure that they meet their commitments and how we use the income that we get wisely, not approve what color marble is used in the foyer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Perfect timing. Vera O'Connor. Greetings, commissioners, Thank you, Mr. Greetings. Mike Mathis, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vera O'Connor, a resident of Springfield. I really thought that all the discussion about Springfield MGM plans were over before the host agreement was signed, and MGM would not try to change horses in midstream. At the last hearing before the host agreement, I was signed. I told Mr. Mattis that we in Springfield would hold his feet to the fire to make sure he kept his promise and that 
the agreement would be kept. Since then, there have been many changes. First, the opening date was pushed back. The design with the glass tower has been changed. The straw that breaks the camel's back, however, is their most recent proposal to decrease the size of the building and make the parking garage smaller. The last proposed change was announced just before the last municipal election, a bombshell. It could not have happened at a worse time, although, in my opinion, at least one city councillor benefited from it by getting a lot more votes than he would have. I have received a lot of flack from some people who oppose the idea of Springfield Casino, and they never cease to remind me that they told me that MGM would not live up to the host agreement. Those same people have no control over their kids either, so you know they always try to tell people what to do. It is my hope that there will be no more changes to the plans. I still would like to see plans that include the glass tower that was promised and give Springfield Casino the wow factor, just like Malaysia in Las Vegas. That's a wow factor. So thank you for your time. Respect to all. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Mario Fiori. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner Crosby and members of the commission. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Looks like everybody's had a long day, so I'm going to keep my comments short and brief. My name is uh, Mario W. Fiari. I'm 65 years old, born and raised in Springfield, South End, <coughs> and have been a resident of the city of Springfield for my entire 65 years. I'm neither an expert at construction or finance, so I'm going to talk about my experience with MGM. A little over three years ago, I saw somewhere that there was going to be an informal meeting at a community office hosted by MGM. I said, wait a minute, MGM, the world leader in hospitality and entertainment, right here in my hometown of Springfield? I just had a go, and I liked what I heard at that informal meeting more than three years ago. And I like what I've seen since that meeting. Civic groups and organizations knocking on MGM's door, examples such as 20,000 towards 4th of July fireworks, 60,000 towards improved lighting for downtown Springfield, and most of all, the millions of dollars towards a brand new Springfield rescue mission to house our city's homeless. So MGM has certainly worked with our city over these past three years, so I would hope that both the Mass Gaming Commission and our city of Springfield would work with MGM on these proposed changes to the original hotel casino plans. That's just my opinion, and thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Jeffrey Chufrida. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, good afternoon. I'm Jeffrey Chufrida, the president of the Springfield Regional Chamber of Commerce. I've had the, the pleasure or the distinction of Welcome appearing back. for you before. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I've, in deference to your time and to those behind me that want to testify, I've had, I have uh, handed in uh, some written testimony for you, and I, I'm sure that you'll, you'll consider that. So I am just here really just to personally uh, reconfirm the Springfield Regional Chamber's uh, support for MGM Springfield, uh, and, and that includes given their design changes. The board has, has looked at those, have been briefed by those, and recommitted its support for MGM uh, with the modifi modifications. Uh, in my comments, I talk about that, uh, you know, the commitment that MGM has really shown uh, to this city, and clearly uh, much of what they're doing is, is based upon their great experience that is certainly good for them, but I know from working with them so much that every, every consideration is given to make sure that that's also good for the city of Springfield. Clearly recognized MGM, our early support for them, as a world leader, not just a, a, a national leader in gaming and entertainment. So even though we do have architects and lawyers and bankers and you name it on our board, uh, it, it's very difficult for us, quite frankly, to second guess uh, a, an entity with their reputation and their ability to spend $950 million into the fine points of architecture. Um, as I said to you the last time I was in, in front of you, 
not only does MGM have to open up this resort, and we want them to open up the resort, it has to be sustainable for a long time into the future. So I think some of the changes, they perhaps were not ones they necessarily wanted to make, but in order to make sure that this is sustainable, uh, I think they did. So they have shown a commitment to local vendors. I just want to leave you with that. That's one of the things that the chamber really insisted upon. Uh, they have had some construction, as you know, going on on that site. They've got some contracts out to bid right now, and I know uh, not from MGM, but from my members uh, that they have, many of my members have been working on that site. Uh, they've kindly incorporated many of our members, uh, both in the construction trade and vendors, in the bid package they put out. And I know that our members have gotten back to me that some of the contractors interested in bidding on them have been contacted by those. So I think they made a commitment to that, and I just want to let you know that they have lived up to that commitment, and it's one that I see uh, only strengthening going forward. So in summary, the uh, Springfield Regional Chamber continues to support uh, MGM's uh, Springfield designs. Uh, we would ask for an, ex uh, an expedited approval on this so that we can get this uh, great project underway and get those construction jobs and permanent jobs, uh, which we so sorely need in this area. So, Mr. thank you for your consideration of this and thank you. the written testimony. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your written testimony. We do have all of the correspondence, every email, a letter, every letter that we get is in our books. We, re we do read it all, so please feel free to comment that way as well. Uh, Tom Lott. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tom Lott. I live in uh, Forest Park Heights. I am an avid supporter of, this, of the casino, and I and most of the people in my sphere of, con of influence are okay with the design changes. We see the changes as very minute. The casino project, from our perspective, is the most significant development in the history of Springfield, and we should do whatever we need to do to facilitate and expedite the completion of the project. MGM is investing $950 million in our city. Obviously, they are not going to make any major changes that would negatively impact their projected revenue screen. Getting rid of the Tower Hotel and placing the people closer to the street and expanding the area where people will congregate is no brainer. It just makes good sense. I am not a gambler. But I want Springfield to be a place where there's plenty to do. I mean, for instance, entertainment, shops, events, activities, and more. This will attract more foot traffic and help all the, the surrounding businesses. We have been promised $25 million per year and 2,000 and 3,000 construction and permanent jobs, respectively. As long as we are getting the revenue and the, and the jobs, these minor design changes should have no impact on us. Let's let MGM decide what's best for their business and do what we can to expedite the entire process so that we can get this development open for business prior to the fall of 2018. And I want to thank you guys, number one, for taking the time, and thank you for your concern for the city of Springfield. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, sir. Jeffrey Burstein. Commissioner, Chairman, thank you. Good Jeff afternoon. Burstein, I own property at uh, 1317, 1343 East Columbus Avenue, which is in between the entrance and exit to the proposed development. So, not long after the unsuccessful repeal referendum, Michael Mathis stated, this is where we go from promises made to promises kept. Shortly thereafter, MGM came to you requesting additional time to complete their project on the premise that they had to coordinate with the viaduct reconstruction. Soon thereafter, they announced that they no longer wanted to build the glass tower. And yet again, just a short time after that, MGM filed a notice of project change making additional changes and reductions to the retail space, the bowling alley, movie theater, the parking garage, and other areas, along with the bus and the traffic pattern. They also previously made a change that wasn't very public. That was to eliminate the designated turning lane recommended by their experts, 
which is the road widening on East Columbus Avenue, which would help traffic flow onto Bliss Street and into their parking garage. That decision was made when they chose to default on the contract to purchase our property between Howard and Bliss Streets. That decision has consequences on the safety of the motoring public, which will be weaving lanes to access the parking garage and proposed bus depot, safety of pedestrians, as well as the safety of the residents, employees, occupants, and visitors of our building. Our building has five residential apartments along with two businesses. In addition to the grave risks to public safety, the consequence of MGM's decision is that we will have no parking, there will be no access to the building, as it will become landlocked, and the project will create a nuisance for the owners and its occupants and guests. The proposed project does not protect the built environment, which is a requirement of the City of Springfield zoning ordinance. Moving the garage entrance on Bliss Street 50 feet closer to East Columbus Avenue will cause buses and other traffic to back up onto East Columbus Avenue, causing traffic snarls. The new bus, bus pattern will also cause emission and noise pollution along with severe vibration and shadowing in front of the building. The proposed parking behind the building for extended vans and limousines will cause excessive emissions as those vehicles will need to warm up in the cold New England winter. There will also be noise 24 hours a day from people and vehicles immediately behind the building disturbing our residential tenants. The proposed signs on the parking structure, if allowed to be illuminated, will shine into our apartments causing a nuisance to the tenants. Our apartments are the only residences on the casino and retail block. The elimination of parking on Howard Street, which is less than 10 feet from our building, should be replaced by parking that is equally as close. Our residential tenants need to be able to park overnight and close to their residences to bring up groceries and other items. The generators that are proposed to be located behind our building, in between the parking garage and our building, will create excessive noise and emissions that will result in a nuisance to our occupants and tenants. Those generators, if run at night, will potentially keep my tenants awake. The transformer that was installed on the property behind our building is not depicted on any of the plans and will result in the elimination of parking spaces that have been represented. Surely, if MGM can turn a hotel on its side and reconfigure its plans for its benefit in such an expedited manner, then they should be able to accommodate the built environment. I respectfully request that you re-examine the risks presented arising from not widening East Columbus Avenue to add a turning lane and that you require MGM to keep designated parking immediately behind my building for the benefit of the occupants, including overnight parking for the tenants. Provide an area next to our building to keep our trash and recycling that is accessible for garbage trucks to enter and turn around. Provide a designated drop-off space adjacent to the building for Mr. deliveries Bursting, to and I'm sorry, are you about done? I'm pretty close, Chairman. All right. Thank you. Install an elevator in the garage at the west side of the garage abutting Howard Street to promote walkability to the riverfront, East Columbus Avenue, businesses, and the courthouse. Restrict MGM from illuminating their signs that will shine into the tenants' apartments and relocate the generators which should be able to re be relocated away from the only apartments on the, in, the, in the Main Street, Union Street, State Street, East Columbus Ave block. I also ask you that to consider Sir, why requiring why MGM. You, why don't you submit the rest of this? This is pretty technical I'm step. wrapping it up. Give, us a, give this uh, in writing. We'll take it from there. And I have, Chairman, but can I just wrap it up? If it's quick. That is. I also ask that you consider requiring MGM to build a garage as promised as well as the residential apartments as promised. I believe that the residential apartments will help promote a safe and vibrant development. Lastly, I ask that you require MGM to grant a recorded easement to the abutters and to the city of Springfield for parking, which has been promised by MGM. Let's make sure from now on promises that are made are promises kept. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Doctor, is it Gloria? Is it, I don't want to take a risk on the last name. I can't read it. I don't blame you for not wanting to take a risk. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it's Dr. Gloria Caballero Arce. Okay. Um, good afternoon to all of you, commissioners. As a citizen of Springfield for over 30 years, I have watched this great city evolve, struggle, and become a force to be reckoned with. 
as a result of its people, their hard work and commitment to a better Springfield for all. We are, and proudly, a very diverse community, and for the most part, we work together for our common causes. We have a rich history as the city of first. Founded in 1636 by English Puritan William Pinch, uh, Pinchon and named, Springfield's, uh, as named Springfield in 1641, we are the first Springfield in the New World. We are the city of homes, Victorian in style, second only to San Francisco. Basketball was created here. Dr. Seuss, known worldwide, was a product of Springfield. Mulberry Street was made famous as a result of his books. St. John's Congregational Church, founded in 1844, played a pivotal role in the abolitionist movement. John Brown attended services there. Springfield leads in trade and transportation, education and health services, manufacturing, tourism, hospitality, and government. We are considered as one of America's top emerging cultural markets. A 33% Latino population with buying power that has increased over 295%. Quite impressive when one considers that we arrived a little over two decades ago. The citizens of Springfield are an intelligent, creative, highly motivated, hardworking, honest people of integrity. Historically, we take a backseat to no one in terms of accomplishments. We have had a great impact on all sectors of our society, from education to politics, to arts and sports. I want to keep this momentum going. That is why we came out in strong support of MGM's casino resort. resort. I see MGM as transparent with clear communication regarding every phase of this project and resort casino. Despite recent media sensationalism to the contrary, they recently addressed our concerns by coming forward with sound reasons for the changes that may or may not be approved by the Gaming Commission. These changes will hopefully benefit the community now and in the long run. In my opinion, my, my support for MGM is based on the fact that it will create three to 5,000 jobs at every level, from entry to executive levels. These jobs are direly needed by our community to keep us on the fast track to the future Springfield deserves. MGM has taken into consideration the geographic layout of Springfield with its, resi with its residences, small businesses, and entertainment venues, and have tried to maintain the integrity, character, and charm of our Springfield. I believe the revised plan will work for the city of Springfield, especially in the area of employment. I also believe that the building of MGM casinos will catapult us into a brighter future for all of the citizens of Springfield that are, we are, that are so deserving of this. I say we put aside the recent past and move forward with the confidence in MGM. A brighter future in all sectors of our society depends on it. And as an addendum, I'd like to say, I too wanted a tower, but I still want, but I want jobs more. I want a better in infrastructure. And, and I hope that as a revamping of this proposal, that this is exactly what happens. I want to thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Ray Caporal. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I'm Ray yeah. Caporelli. I Good live afternoon. in the Forest Park District. I grew up in the South End where this project is going to be. I've seen its highs, I've seen its lows. I hear a lot of negativity. Down the street, there's a facility called the, uh, for the homeless shelter. They built this. It was Sterling or Cadillac. It was a Sorai. They tore it down, they rebuilt the facility now. I go by it on a day-to-day -day basis. It is presently in my backyard. It's a beautiful facility and you wouldn't even know what it is. The charitable contributions they've made since they've been here to various organizations, I don't hear anybody turning that money back because it's coming from gaming. This tower, let the dust settle. I know when I go out of town and I stay in a hotel, first person I call is the fire department. I want to know where the highest hook and ladder is going because I ain't taking a room above it. God forbid something happens. This thing will get done. I don't see jobs construction-wise being lost. I don't see permanent jobs being lost. I don't see money going to the city being changed. I don't see money go revenue going to the state being changed. Let the dust settle. Down the street is the Basketball Hall of Fame. 
Mayor Mike Albano is a friend of mine when he was the mayor of the city. That's design number four, that final project, four. It's there. Everybody's happy with it. We've got to stop worrying about this and let this thing go. Let it settle out. The smoke will settle. As you've probably seen the presentation, a lot of their project has taken bigger sizes, a lot smaller sizes. People are getting too big on a tower. It's a tower, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't going to change this city. And when they get done building this facility, I'm sure they're going to have it designed in a way that if you're coming down a highway, you're going to see it. Because it's only going to better them to make people stop there. If I don't see it, I don't go in it. And I'm sure they're going to do something to make it so that the people can, coming down the highway or coming there to find it will find it. This thing will be done. Just let them do their jobs. You people are doing your due diligence. I hope the city council, yourself, and the historical society all take a deep breath and write off on this project. Thank you for coming. Have a safe journey back to Boston. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Some of us go back to Boston, not all of us. <laughs> Thank you for your timeliness. Bill Devlin. Devlin, D-E-V-L-I-N. Greetings. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Devlin, an architect in Springfield. I live and work at 235 State Street in what we optimistically call downtown Springfield. <laughs> And I've been there for several years. I grew up in the area, was out for 15 years, and came back about 30 years ago. And there have been a lot of changes. But I still must be pretty naive. Because my first thought that uh, MGM, oh, where are they? Uh, anyhow, MGM was a large, worldwide, sophisticated organization. Should understand that large projects have changes. Should understand that there are always delays, things happen, things hit the fan. If they have a 40-year commitment, I hope you can hold them to that through whatever financial security is required. We pessimists tend to put them in the five years or so range. Before they even came here, the surrounding casinos in Connecticut and elsewhere were already in trouble. Um, but thankfully to MGM's presentation at the city stage, they apparently have it down to two years for some of them. Um, but they, 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 they seem to think, they, they basically, with the finances, they're complaining about the fact that we have a casino boom. A casino comes in, prices go up. And they're complaining about prices going up. Um, the, sensibly, somebody would budget in extra time if you're going to spend $800 million to design something that prices out now at five fifty or 600 If you're going to price it out now at 800 you know it's going to be $1.2 or whatever around there when you get around to building it. That's just common sense, which isn't that common. The underground delivery that they had initially discussed um, sounds great, and only Bay State West did a similar thing. The semis go down and they actually drive around underneath that building. But uh, that two-story underground parking was tried by the Sheraton, by the federal building, and by uh, uh, Columbus Center had other issues when they were building. This, is, and it didn't work out to have two stories below grade. This is bottom land. That is no secret. We have a big river. We had floods seven feet, ten feet high on South Main Street in the 1930s. This is bottom land. It's mud and muck. You have trouble. It's saturated with water. This is not rocket science. In the 1640s, the plans of Springfield labeled this whole downtown area the Hasseke Marsh. And that's what they're building in. They should be able to figure that out. Um, the hotel, I don't really miss the tower all that much. Um, and I think the low rise on Main Street maybe is a good idea, but it is, we've had skyscrapers for well over 120 years. It's no secret that a smaller floor area in a tower, because you want to make the floor small, make it tall, make it sexy, um, it, that's never been a secret that that requires more space for stairs and more space for elevators. But they discovered that when they made the last presentation. That's why they had to do the low rise hotel. That hotel, that glass tower, for better or for worse, was a great advertising banner for people on the one, especially the ones coming in from the south. That was a grabber, a real eye-catcher, 
was wow factor, and I just hope you would keep their feet to the fire in the finances, because when you give up a flag like that, that tells me you're in major, major trouble. That is not something you part with easily. But my- All right, Mr. Leffen, you all set? Almost. Uh, on historic especially is my pet peeve. The rotunda, they show this ridiculous little drawing here. They wrote so-called dome in 73 State Street. 73 State Street is their best asset. And there was, they've, they had to move the dome because the hotel was there. When the hotel was gone, they're still moving it. Every place they've put it, it's butchered. They've talked about a great entrance in the front of 73 State Street, which was approved by Springfield Historical Commission, but I don't recall that anything was even shown to the commission. They're butchering that building. But they love that rendering view from across State Street, which somehow in the rendering is 150 or 200 feet wide. Um, and I just think that that is a, a terrible shame, what they're doing to the history. They claim to, to love our history. Their original pitch coming here was, we love your history and we love your character. Now watch what we do to it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, let's see. I can't read. The, oh, this is the same per Jeff Burstein we already heard from him. David Champy. Hi, uh, thank Good you for afternoon. giving me an opportunity to talk in front of the commission today. I'm gonna to keep this very short. Um, basically, I'm completely for the changes in the plans that MGM has put forth. Uh, and I just want to um, comment on something that's been going on. About a couple of years ago, I tried to get Whole Foods and Trader Joe's to come to Springfield, and they wouldn't come. And the reason is because the area is economically depressed, profoundly economically depressed. South End, as you, I'm sure you know, has a 66% poverty rate back in 2012. That's the statistic for 2012. People aren't going to come here. MGM, on the other hand, is willing to put a lot of risk capital down in the city. And I think that it's very important for the people of the city of Springfield to be very mindful of that fact. The city that MGM is going to come in here, do some economic revitalization that's really so important for the city. Something that we haven't really seen in Springfield for many, many years. I mean, the city's been on economic, an economic slide for many decades. I mean, I've lived here since 54. So, I mean, I've seen quite a lot, and what I've seen hasn't been really good. And so this is a great opportunity for the city, and I think that um, MGM coming here is really something really important. And I think we have to cut some slack MGM's in the process of doing some fine tuning. Um, it's a very, very big economic project for the city, and it would be expected. I mean, I anticipated that there would be some fine tuning along the way. So that's my take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. That is the last name on our list, I believe. Is there anybody who uh, didn't sign up that wanted to speak? Yes, sir. Sir? Three minutes. Um, good afternoon. Can I have um, your name, please? Name and address? Uh, my name is uh, Moikil Alukta. Um, I live at 55 Foster Street here in Springfield. What I wanted to say, uh, commissioners, is that when this process was going on about the selling of the casino to the citizens of Springfield, they had this image that they projected. And this image that they projected was this high-rise office building, this high 26, 25 story building. And in this roadshow that they went through the city to sell it, it would grace the skyline of the city of Springfield and make it a new paradigm. And now they have changed course, okay? And the people in my neighborhood, they feel that this is, they've been cheated. Okay, they've been cheated to the fact that this is not going to happen now. Okay, this is not going to, this is going to, it was going to change the image of the city for years to come. In this case, it is tantamount to, to almost like a Ponzi scheme, if I'm not being disrespectful. And I, 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 um, other members of my family across the country, when they saw this advertisement, it gave, this, it gave the image that this was going to change the city forever, hopefully. And now this is not going to happen. These people down in Las Vegas who run MGM, 
they're, most, they're among the most sophisticated and savvy investors in the world. And so these people, they know what they're doing. They're not little children in the candy store. Um, they're not at a crap table. They know what they're doing. And in that case, I may make a bold statement. And the bold statement I'm, I'm going to make is that why not revoke their license in this case? Because they're not being truthful to the citizens to, to citizen Springfield. And in this roadshow that went around to the city almost a year and a half ago, gave this image that this was going to happen. This beautiful tower was going to grace the side, it was going to grace the skyline of the city of Springfield and make it change. And that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? All right. It's about 10 minutes of four. I want to thank everybody who took the time to come and talk. We appreciate it very much. It'll be an important part of our considerations. Uh, we will be back here, I'm sure, many times in the future. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous for four.